Hi, welcome to WebPixel Live, um, and welcome to part two of Ken and Kimber Kiefer's Image Showcase. Um, as we discussed in part one, um, they cheated and they added an extra image, so I decided to split it into two. So um, without any more nonsense from me, let me carry on, and they can carry on talking about their wonderful imagery. Thank you very much, and please enjoy this episode. Right then, what's next? Lovely picture, lovely picture. Uh, upside down in a body stock. The, the yeah, body yeah. Stock. yeah, yeah. So we're back in the swimming pool. Back in the swimming pool. And, and this is your pool, guys, yeah? It's, a, it's our four foot swimming pool. It's just a four foot rectangle uh, with a layout deck. It was built for pool volleyball, but we just we do what we can in it. And if okay. we could redo it, we would definitely change some of that up. <laughs> sure. This image was, it came about a couple, about a month into lockdown when, when COVID first started March or something and it, and not everyone knew exactly. And it was, I mean, it was a very tense time Sure. and, and also boring. It, it's hard to be really tense and bored, but this thing has accomplished both of those things. And, um, people were telling us you should do a, a corona shoe and, and people were doing put on a mask put on gloves put on i don't know it just it didn't it didn't hold an appeal for us we couldn't visually picture anything being novel or exciting and she uh from a, a friend of ours uh, a land photographer that does fitness he did kimber had a friend of ours named brett steely and worked with the fitness industry and he does a whole lot of really really epic fashion shoot i mean uh fitness shoots on land and uh, he had done the body stock, and Kimber wanted to try something with it. And it really came across to me, that's how we felt with COVID. We felt constrained, hard to breathe, not from having the disease, but just from the, the fear and the, the tension. And then mm. people with the disease were describing it like that. And our, I think the entire world was pretty, is, and still is, constrained and nervous. And, and, and it felt like that we were bringing that across in the image because Kimber was constrained and fighting the body stock, but it was also beautiful at the same time that she was overcoming it. I was going to ask that. Um, it looks like you're actually fighting it, as was the word you described. Is that what you're doing in this picture, Kimber? It's not posing. It's pretty flexible, actually. Right. It was actually pretty easy to maneuver. Right. It was fun to work with. This was actually shot at night, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you can talk a with, little bit about your lighting. With there. the lighting here, I had a, a video light back on the yeah. And uh, now it was up on a, it was on a, hanging on a string. But I had a 15,000 lumen um, big blue yeah. side light yeah. hanging on a string so that it was up at the top. And then it's hard for Kimber to get in, in, in an exact spot because when she's doing this, she's moving all over the place. So I just position myself with, I have my strobe set on low just to, to pop the color and to pop Kimber. Yeah. But also have that light just beaming powerfully from behind. Yep. And then I would maneuver myself so that she was in front of the light. Yep. Because she couldn't stay static in, in front of the light. I just had to move myself. You and, know, and sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. The light's created those lovely shadows in the background too, which which by inversing it as well is giving it that real kind of real interest, doesn't it? It's um you know that it's it's created a lovely backdrop. You know, you've got the splash of colour, got the pose. Right. And the and then, yeah, yeah, it's really cool. It's really cool. And the ripples create create those shadows yeah yeah, yeah, and that, yeah that's the case where i didn't want her like we talked about with the chair holding still in a flat water i didn't want flat water i wanted i wanted the movement and the ripples to come through and it and i inverted it i felt like it looked like she was trying to get out of you know you she was seeing another right another world <laughs> so how much i mean obviously this this picture the, the image is inverted how much post processing processing do you normally do i i'm i'm guessing not a whole lot doesn't they don't look not, terribly processed not yeah. a whole lot we try yeah. to do everything we can in the shoe yeah and then sometimes i just sometimes it's as simple as i send her the image and then the you see it on the phone upside down and i'm like oh you know and then sometimes i'll just flip stuff around to see how it looks with the pool, I've never flipped anything on in the ocean. It just doesn't it doesn't appeal no, to me, no, I or I have no idea. But in the pool, where you can get these cool reflections, sometimes it, it just adds another element that I, yeah. I, I like. It's a, it amazes me what inverting an image can do to change mm. the 
entire look of the photo. It's mm -hmm. really, some images work really well like that. It's not something I want to do a lot, but every once in a while it works. I think it makes us very abstract, which I think is really part of the goal here, isn't it? It's not, it's, it's, it's much less of a classic kind of modeling shot, isn't it? It's more of right. a kind of abstract of image. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's very cool. It's lovely. All right. Is this number five? We have we. I've lost count. There you go. That's the good news. Uh, I've lost no, count. It's probably one, one or two. <laughs> <laughs> Does it going to be that? Yeah. That? Uh, hmm. Or if you want to chart, just for a little bit, just for a little quickly, can we right. the hammerheads? Yeah. yeah. Just Lovely. Since, since we're talking about mood and, and adapting, we, uh, we, we had wanted to model with hammerheads for four years in a row and things didn't work out. We, I mean, we're not independently wealthy unfortunately so we can't just go rent an entire dive outfit and say bring us some safety divers and some bait and get all this stuff and uh every once in a while we luck into things with some friends or or with another client or something and so we finally had an opportunity to shoot with hammerheads it was a one-time thing we, we were doing something else and we had we had a few minutes and i had envisioned always similar to kimber on the ship a crystal clear you know bahama bimini water and a hammerhead came about. Well, it was a turned up day of silt everywhere in the water. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, we weren't able to get that, but so then I told Kimber, "Well, go switch dresses." We, we, I had she had on a like a bright, vivid color, and I said, "Let's get something a little more green, turquoisey, and let's do a dreamy." You know, with the with the limited visibility, it gives it more of a dreamy feel. Yeah. And we were able to work with that, and I, I really liked the results. Yeah. Of how that came and we had to after we only had about two hammerhead passes because two bull sharks and a tiger came and there was we didn't have enough we didn't have enough going on and those sharks are, are too pushy for what yeah, we yeah. were doing for her to be taking the mask off. I don't prefer to model with the mask with, with those. those. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah with the hammers. Right. She had been down with these hammers and we saw how they were we didn't have much bait, we just had the scent. And so they were kind of like ranging have you ever been on the hammerhead dive? I have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, in Bimini, yeah, yeah. yeah. A lot of times they're coming up the, the bait, you know, the, so up following the current to the bait. Well, we yeah. didn't have the bait with us. We did, had had bait earlier and took it up, and so they were kind of wide-ranging. They were yeah. in big circles. They just move around doing this, aren't they? Right. Yeah. So they would come, you know, they came over by her just randomly. Yeah. So we just had to be ready to get the shot. And yeah. this shot right here is exactly why I always bring them dress on the boat because that was not planned that was like they were like hey you want to try so i had a dress on me and if you don't you miss that opportunity there but you go. yeah i i mean i only do i have to feel comfortable if i don't internally feel comfortable but like, as soon as those other sharks showed up i was like yeah, okay. time to go. yeah. yeah, yeah. this is bad and i just those certain sharks probably just start well so, certainly bulls have a bulls can be pretty um Pretty nouncy, well, that can't particular they? tiger there is so pushy. Yeah. She's not a, she's not quick and aggressive, but she's pushy. You know, yeah. you've got to be able to know where to put your hands if you need to yeah. redirect. Yeah, yeah. All right, so okay. five five B. Yeah, five B. Say a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> <Drop> it <up. laughs> Yeah. So he said something earlier. I want to speak first because he said sometimes it takes us like two or three years to actually do the shoot we had already been out there and this is a remote location next to see dive center you it's a five-hour drive from cancun is this is this chinchura 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 yeah. yeah so then you get there and then it's a rough two-hour boat ride out there and you're on the fishing shack and then the first year we went i brought a dress i was hoping i would get an opportunity but this was bad and it just wasn't safe so it didn't happen you know and that's thing about mother nature is yeah it's not always going to work out in your favor and with any underwater photography it's things got to fall in place everything lots of things so um, it didn't and it took two years or three years i can't remember until we finally got the opportunity so um, and this was the fourth year we had done it last year and got it to kind of work yeah. but this wasn't great it was stormy yeah. we just got a little bit of this here and the this here changes really rapidly it's shallow yeah it's right by yeah. the it's right by the mangroves and you've got open ocean behind you in the mangroves in front, it, it, it's volatile, so you just got to take whatever opportunity you can get. So, so this shot, this um, crop looks big. Am I right? It's probably twelve or thirteen feet, which is what three and a half meters. Yeah, it's yeah, three, three and a half, four yeah. meters. Yeah, yeah. Four meters. Um, it, 
and you don't know if they're male or female. The only way to tell is to go up there. All of their organs are, are internal. So yeah. I, I think it was a, I, I feel it was a male because it's a really dominant crop. Whenever some of the other crops, if they're smaller crops, if they come up, and to do a little background, how the crops are even in the area is fishermen for generations, decades, have been coming to this island. It's, it's, a, it's an atoll, a collapsed coral atoll, and there's probably 500 crocodiles in the center lagoon. They have mm -hmm. no idea how they got that far, 35, 37 miles from the mainland. They, mm -hmm. Scientists don't know how they got out there, right. but they've clearly been there a long time. And so the fishermen shacks which are limited. They, they aren't, no new ones are ever being built. These are passed down from generation to generation. Right. The, the shacks are out in anywhere from three to eight feet of water. They build these shacks. They go there for the fishing season, either lobster or the fish. They stay in these shacks, no power. Whatever whatever you bring is what you've got. You yeah. bottle water, you bring, you bring a generator. And uh, the reason the crocs come out is because these fishermen for years and years have been cleaning their catches and throwing it over the set. Right. So the crocs say, hey, here's a free, easy meal. We'll come out. We'll use these scraps. So yeah. a couple of them come out. Luckily, all 500 of them don't come out because <laughs> that we wouldn't be in the water. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So anytime what we do is we go and instead of catching fish, we, we spear invasive lionfish yep. and cut the, cut the spines off and we tie them to a fishing string, no hook, and we just kind of splash them in the water because they're attracted. The crocs are attracted to movement. And uh, splash. They they eat a lot of seabirds and big fish, shark, and stuff like that. So so when there's movement, they're they're quick to react. Yeah, these are totally. like Nile crocodiles. Is that what they call them? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like the the big salties. Those are eating wildebeest and stuff. So they're a lot bigger and different. more. They're different. They're 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 saltwater crocodiles, but they're American. They're, they're American crocodiles, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. The uh, and so this one is is. In general, most of the time, they'll kind of sit still, and then they'll react really fast. So you, you've got to have somebody. To the left of the picture, there's a safety diver with a, with a long, thick stick. And right. what these sticks are for, they're not for poking, slamming, hitting, or anything the crocodile. What they are is they're a barrier. And so if the crocodile runs into a hard barrier, they, they move back. They don't yep. just keep fighting their tail on it. And um, so the stick is just out of the shot. So if yep. the croc makes a move toward Kimber, the stick goes in between and yep. blocks the croc's movement. Yep. And we're directing its attention either towards me or to the side of me with that lionfish or me splashing beside my head. Yeah. And so just to keep its eyes and its attention over toward us. So there's, I mean, also, there's a huge amount of trust here because, you know, you, you, you are, I mean, the croc is there. Kim, but I presume you can't see a whole lot of this, really, at that point. I can so. see him movement, but not enough to. I got to get it out of the way when I can right. see. She can't see his eyes move or anything like that. Yeah, yeah. And so she absolutely has to trust the team, yeah. myself, and then the team that's up on the boat watching to make sure no one crocs from behind us to the side of us. Yeah, and like he said, the tension's all away from me so anytime it shows any kind of interest in me they you know get more attention over their movement things like that to just keep kind of pulling him that way because he does tend to want to look at me yeah sure. it looks toward her he steps in immediately we we just reset yeah, I just pull you know. back like I've got to see movement I pull back but um and one interesting thing anytime we have to do that no. we have to wait because you, that it's a really fine sand bottom and if you move, like for instance, if I'm moving to the right, I can't do what I normally do and back up and move to the right, move to the left. I have to be more steady because if you just take a step, it poofs the, right. the real fine silt. And depending on the current, it's how long it will take for that to wash away. Yeah. Well, and then he's shooting wide angle, so um, photographers know shooting that, but you have to be close. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. You have to be really close. So I have to, you know, he's like, get closer, get closer. I'm like, I'm as close <laughs> as I'm comfortable. Yeah, yeah. But it, if, the safety and I can see how they're doing that I don't does allow me to get a little closer but I'm still in my comfort range and this this crop you can't model with any crop you know and that's why yeah. you need these people like he said this one this one keeps the other ones away like but it, with the people this one's really it's almost like he likes to model I know he doesn't he's a lot of animal but he sure does act like it yeah he's, he's, he's more stable yeah he's predictable you know more within reason. yeah 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 some, some of the crops in the area, every trip, there's some that are just 
insane. I mean, some and are they just, crazy they eyes. They come and... flying in by yep. I mean, that's all they do. They don't ever yeah. pause on the bottom. They don't ever kind of sit. They yep. just swim in and start biting everything that's in, in the area. Yep. And you obviously can't, and you can't, most of the time you can't get in with those. Yeah, yeah. So, like I said, everything has to fall into place. Visibility. So for lighting this, we had, we had sun behind kind of to the left of me coming in. And so I moved both my strokes to the right to try to, to eliminate shadows off the crocodile yeah. and then up to try to go around and get the right set of Kimber. So one was down to the right, one was up to the right. And, and this is played with the, with the, with the, with the DS one, six ones, big ones. It was the, right. The DS one sixty ones. That's all I use. I know they're yeah. bigger, a little bigger and heavier. No, no, no. It gives you the option. You've got a lot of battery power and you've yeah. got a fast recycle Yeah, and they're super dependable. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I've had friends with other, I've, I, I don't ever mention bad things, but I've had friends with other stuff where they, you know, you spend a ton of money and time and planning and you go somewhere and you're on the board and all of a sudden doesn't something work. works, doesn't work, that you can't repair. It's just frustrating. Yeah, yeah. But the, uh, and so, my eye flight, the housing has taken several crop bites because in general, I've been around them a lot. We've worked with the safety team and stuff. And I'm comfortable using my eye light like they use the poles. I use mm. right to block them, and I and I'm obviously I could get hurt. You could get hurt walking down the sidewalk. You get hurt in yeah. right, and maybe I'm not quick enough to get the to get it in the Crocs mind. But my at one point I had one bite my dome and try to take it, and I didn't let go. And so I expected my dome to be off and my camera to be flooded. I flip it up; it's totally fine. You know, a couple scratches. Flooded. Very cool. It's really tough. <laughs> So, Kimber, I mean, the, 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 the takeaway from this picture is, I mean, it's a very strong picture. It's a picture of, of a very strong... So the pose and the mood, did you it, did you set out to do that or did it just happen organically? I mean, it definitely it definitely gives this 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 um, impression of strength and power. So this, uh, and here you have to be extra weighted. You can't be, like, neutrally weighted because you need full control and instant body movement because mm. I, I don't have time to be um, flailing around it, and there you're limited because the water's not very deep the setup yeah. the water it's it rises in a little bit with high tide low tide but you're limited and your movement's limited so your posing is very limited so usually on your knees and something like that is a good pose um, you know and that, that is just a powerful animal and you do try to adapt your posing to what you're shooting with yeah yeah, it definitely gives me the impression. And it did when right when she did it, yeah, I knew it was working. And and so uh, I got as close as I could to the crocodile and keep everything in scene. And yeah. uh, it just felt it felt like strong woman, uh, just I don't know, like Wonder Woman or something. Very powerful, isn't it? Powerful. You know, it's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, it's beautiful, it's lovely. Thank you. Thanks. So that's that's been wonderful, guys. Thank you so much for sharing those with us um, and sharing the stories behind them. Actually, probably equally important. So, so um, thank you very much. Um, so, what's next? Where are you? Where are you, Where are you off to? Well, I was lucky enough. I know they're in limited demand, but I, I or limited supply. I got a hold of a Canon R five. Oh, very I've nice. Used, in the past, I've been using a Canon five DS R for four or five years and I'm very happy with it. I don't see a need to change until until this the R5, the combination of um, a larger buffer so that I'm not waiting if I'm if I'm snapping a lot of fast moving subject. Yeah. And it's supposed to have better dynamic range, which as underwater you can never have better you know the, too much dynamic range yeah, yeah, yeah. with all the shadows and the bright light. And so I am wanting to give it a shot. So I've got my hands on that. My iCloud housing comes in Wednesday. Excellent. I immediately will be in my pool, practice, 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 because Thanksgiving, we're doing, we're having a family trip. My parents, Kimber's family in um, Cozumel. So Excellent. So we'll, we'll get, we'll get to give this Jeez. whole rig a, a whole lot of a good workout and see what we like and what we don't like, and you know we can adapt from there. Well, that's very exciting. Um, I look forward to seeing those pictures. Where where can everyone see them? Will they will they appear on Instagram or? Um, it will be on my Instagram, which is Ken space Keeper space Underwater. Yeah. Kimber's is Kimber Keeper, one word. Yeah. We we go on the WebPixel forum all yeah. the time and post a lot of stuff. A lot you of do, yeah. Stuff. yeah. And uh, 
it's good to see what people like what people think about it because that sometimes people will think different things and we can also eliminate um, misconceptions especially yeah. about sharks and stuff like that yeah. we can give them facts we can give them behind the scenes videos we can say this is how things are done it's yeah, informative yeah. and and uh it, it, both ways it helps us to know what people are thinking yeah, yeah. i think it's a it's a very positive process isn't it and one of the Absolutely. one of the good one of the good things about social media fantastic yeah. so so thank you both very much guys um um i look forward to seeing your pictures from cozumel um hopefully awesome. well after thanksgiving won't it so so take care um thanks adam, thanks, adam. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsor for this episode, which is Epic Diving from the Bahamas. Um, I would like to thank you all for watching, and um, I hope that you've enjoyed the episode. If you have, please drop it a like. Please feel free to add comments and suggestions in the comments box as well. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Bye.